A whole new season of Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS Endurance Cup began in April at Monza, the first of five endurance races and that traditional mix of three, six and 24 hour events. It was a stellar entry, not only in terms of drivers, but teams and brands as well, represented across the grid, with the highlight being the CrowdStrike 24 hours of Spa that would come mid-season after Monza and Paul Ricard, before the Nürburgring and the season finale in the sunshine of Barcelona. And it wasn't just on-track action that would determine the championship. Off-track too, the Fanatec Arena would yet again be a key part of the season. The eSports Championship having its own point scoring system and those points also for the Real World Teams Championship being absolutely crucial come the end of the season. Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS, is part of the global competition. As a championship in America, Australia and Asia and a mix again of five endurance and five sprint races to make up the overall champions. In pro, where any category of driver can do battle, there were a whole host of outright winners including BMW, WRT switching allegiance from Audi to BMW for this year, taking on Rover Racing for example. Mercedes was spearheaded by Acodis ASP and looking very strong once more. Iron Lynx moved to running Lamborghinis and that meant a return to the championship of Andrea Caldarelli. I'm really happy to be back. Uh, it feels like it's been a long time. Yes, I did Spa last year, but the full, the full season, it's been a too long time. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Over 50 cars is going to be tough, but uh, I think we have a good potential with the car. If we need, we put some elbow out and uh, I will see. Gold is for the gold graded drivers and had a real mix of competitive brands taking part such as Mercedes, BMW, McLaren and Audi. They were all vying for top dog over the course of the season and in the Audi ranks was the very welcome return of a former star of the championship, the quick Belgian driver Maxime Soule. Really uh, happy to be uh, here with uh, Come To Your Racing in uh, Audi Sport in the Gold Cup. So a bit of a change for me compared to a pro, but uh, I think uh, we've got uh, all in our hands to do something great. In the Silver Cup, for silver graded drivers only, there was going to be a huge battle between Audi, Lamborghini, Mercedes and Aston Martin. Audi was particularly strong, with leading cars coming from the Belgian Comptio and the German Attempto racing teams. They would take on the Grasser Racing Team Lamborghini and also the Bullet Racing Aston Martin. These, the GT stars of the future. The bronze category needs at least one bronze graded driver within the lineup, but a fascinating assortment of pros would be seen here over the season to lend support. Sky Tempesta Racing started as one of the favourites, having switched to McLaren. A Porsche was represented by Pure Racing, taking on the Garage 59 McLaren. Amongst the driving force there, the very experienced, very successful Portuguese driver Miguel Ramos, and he was looking for yet another GT title. It's going to be a big fight. I think this year the, our class has 17 candidates, very strong. So uh, it's all about who's making most of the points uh, during the whole season. In Pro-Am, Barwell Motorsports Lamborghini would start as the favourite, taking on Porsche and Ferrari amongst the key opposition. And just to prove the global spread of the championship, coming across from Canada, the very rapid Samantha Tan. That's so exciting to be here. We did run the 24 hour spa last year, so that was like our first taste of the series. But again, it's like the top teams, the top drivers in the world. And I'm super excited to be here with Rinaldi Racing. Five events, all endurance, but a mix of race durations. Five classes, over 50 cars per event, and some of the best GT drivers in the world would all make for a super competitive season. Monza for round one, and the Italian fans were out in force to see Valentino Rossi in action, now aboard a BMW. On pole, though, was the similar M4 of Rover Racing for Nick Yellily, Marco Wittmann and Philip Eng, a new driver combination for 2023. So I'm teamed up with Philip Eng and Marco Wittmann this year. Uh, last year was Augusto and Nicky Katzberg, so 
yeah, obviously we've had a good start to, to qualifying so far. Um, BMW's obviously taken a good step forward over the winter, um, and now it's about yeah trying to keep it on the top step of the podium, of course. At the start of the race, it was the Rover BMW Philip Eng at the wheel, which grabbed the lead as Valentino Rossi fended off Sheldon van der Linde in the red sister WRT entry as the cars dived down towards the first chicane. Behind, though, there was the inevitable contact as 55 cars tried to funnel into the chicane at the Recifilio. Philip Eng tried to break away as the car stormed through the Curva Grande for the first time Battles raging on all the way through the field. Mauro Engel in treble seven Mercedes. Break late and move through into third position. And the number 19 Lamborghini of Rolf in Eichen was a victim of contact back at the Retifilio. Lorenzo Petrese, his aggressor, and that brought out a full course yellow, which translated to a safety car. After that safety car period, the race was back underway. Eng leading, Rossi second, but Engel dived around the outside of him heading into the chicane and wriggled away by. It was brave stuff, and Engel was on his toes, then setting off in pursuit of the race leader. There was yet more drama, though, as the portrait of Nicky Leutenweiler had a big, big off coming down towards the Retifilio. Yellow flags once more, and a badly damaged car. As Louis Pret led bronze, Rossi had a problem and slowed after running wide. He had to drop down through the gears to rejoin. This is how it looked. Breaking late, going deep, struggling to make the chicane, and as he came back onto the circuit, then had to go down, down, down through the gearbox to pick up momentum to accelerate away once more. Eventually, Rossi did pick up momentum and rejoin. He would hand the car over to Augusto Farfus on the pit stops, but Farfus himself had problems. A punctured tyre, meaning a very long, very slow inlap. The day was unravelling around them. Fabian Schiller in number 777 Mercedes had endured a slow pit stop and then went off the road coming into the first chicane. He had to go on the escape road at the Retifilio. Sandy Mitchell, though, in the Lamborghini of the k -Pax team, was on his toes. He was looking for a way past the Mercedes of Timor Bogoslanovski, and he made a big, big dive coming up to the second chicane. It came close to disaster, but Mitchell just scrabbled through. Bogoslanovski had to go up the escape road, and as he rejoined, he came under immediate attack. Andrea Calderelli moved through on the inside, gaining a place away from the Akodis ASP Mercedes. Fabian Schiller's race didn't improve. Contact with Dennis Marshall's Audi triggered retirement for the Almanar Racing Mercedes. He had to limp back round to the pit lane, the pace of the car ebbing away, and retirement beckoned. Dennis Marshall dived past Bogoslavski as well. He ran off the road and back on again, and Christopher Meese chasing hard behind also attacked Bogoslavski, who went ultra defensive and there was contact between the two. That did damage to the Mercedes. And ultimately, as the smoke would suggest, retirement loomed for the Akonis ASP entry, and Jules Gounon was not amused. Bogoslavski, rather than heading for the pit lane, coasted over the line. There was no chance of getting the car back from that, and the race was done. This was Christopher Meese being opportunistic. Bogoslavski swooped across the front. The damage between the two effectively did for the Mercedes. Timor Bogoslavski out of the race. Then Dries van Thor had a problem, a punctured left front tyre. He pitted and dropped down to sixth place. The BMW rejoined as on track Arjun Maini and Henrique Chavez were battling for fourth in bronze. Chavez being roughed up and running off the road, just rejoining and only just avoiding his teammate. It wasn't the only class battle that was getting frantic. Pro-Am leader Francesco Guerra was hit by Andrea Bertolini and off the road went the BMW. That put the Barwell Lamborghini on its tail and Dennis Lind was a man on a mission. The Danish driver, British GT champion, made his move going up towards the Curva Grande and moved through into the Pro-Am lead. It was brave stuff, and it worked for a class win.
But an overall win would go the way of Rover Racing. For Nick Yellowley, Philip Eng and Marco Wittmann, it was a delighted Rover Racing team that came out on top of the opening endurance round of the season. Indeed, it was a 1-2 for Rover Racing. Honours to Philip Eng, Nick Yellowley and Marco Wittmann ahead of Dan Harper, Neil Verhagen and Max Hesse. With third going to the Iron Lynx Lamborghini of Mirko Bortolotti, Andrea Caldarelli and Jordan Pepper ahead of Christopher Mead, Patrick Niederhauser and Simon Gachet in the best of the Audis. Yeah, as a team, uh, I couldn't be happier for everybody. Uh, Rover Racing did an incredible job. Uh, BMW with our M4 GT3. We just had an incredibly strong package today. Um, my amazing teammates uh, did an outstanding job as well, so here we are. Uh, very, very happy. The podium for the overall race winners then. A delighted Nick Yellowly joined by Marco Wittmann and Philip Eng. The perfect way to start this new association. The gold winners were Max Hoffer, Maxime Soule and Nicolas Barth in the Comte-U Audi. In silver, honours went the way of Sam de Jong, Finley Hutchison and Loris Hesemans. Bronze success went the way of Porsche, Joel Stern, Alex Malikin and Klaus Bachler, the drivers. Whilst Lamborghini could celebrate a pro-am win thanks to Barwell Motorsport, Adam Ballon, Rob Collard and Dennis Lind. Round two of the Endurance Cup was at Paul Ricard and the traditional 6-hour race into the darkness. That perfect pre-Spa 24-hour test session, if you like. A chance for the teams and drivers to get used to what it is to be in action in the night. Looking strong in the Silver Cup after a win at Monza was the Comte to Audi of Finlay Hutchison. Going into the first round at Monza, we didn't expect to be coming to Paul Ricard like this, especially with where we started the race. It's going to be really tough. The Silver Cup Championship this year is really competitive. I think we just need to do what we've done in Monza and just take it slow and allow the race to come to us. Otherwise, if we start chasing and going crazy now, it's going to be a long year. Mercedes number 88 started on pole position with the Monza winning BMW only 11th on the grid and it was Jules Gounon who grabbed the advantage on the run down towards the first corner. It was Mercedes first and second as Gounon swung into the first left. The Almanar racing entry tucked up behind him and BMW number 98 looking to try to get through the traffic. Onto the Mistral straight for the first time and trouble for Rob Collard's Barwell Lamborghini off the road after contact into the barriers and into retirement. There was a bit of hip and shoulder, Rob Collard got turned around and off he went. Big disappointment after the win in the opening race of the year at Monza. Contact put Collard onto the curb and around he went. But it was that impact into the barrier that really spelt the end. That brought out the safety car and a first round of pit stops. Matteo Drudi's Audi jumping ahead of Gunon to take the lead. Marco Wittmann was on the move, attacking Charles Wirtz for fifth place in a big BMW battle. Side by side they ran, battling also with Simon Gachet's Audi. At 280 kilometres an hour, the two BMWs went toe to toe. Wittmann on the outside, Wirtz on the inside. And as those two were busy squabbling, Simon Gachet found space on the inside and retook the pair of them. It was a fantastic scrap, and this was how Charles Wirt saw it. He got past Gachet, he was busy trying to fend off the BMW to the left in the hands of Wittmann, and then as they approached that fast right-hander of Simi, he suddenly realised that he'd picked the wrong battle. Gachet got past him and threw at the other BMW as well. Finally though, number 98 went ahead and up into fourth position. Wittmann on a charge. Wirtz, though, was under renewed attack, this time from Daniel Serra, the Ferrari attacking at the end of the lap. There was contact between the two, and that did for Wirtz. The BMW crawled out of the corner and out of the race. This was how Wirtz saw it. Wait for the bang. And the frustration in the car was evident. WRT entry out of the race. As number 98 BMW now with Philip Eng at the wheel was on the tail of Fabian Schiller in the fight for third place and once more in a straight line the BMW proved it had plenty of grunt and go. 
round the outside. A very brave pass. Eng went through. And then he attacked Timo Bogoslawski in the fading light on the inside at Senior and went into second place. Could the BMW team make it two in a row? As their car was charging up the order, drama for the race leader. Ricardo Feller picked up a puncture and limped back to the pit lane. The damage was enough, though, to cause retirement, having led by 27 seconds, and Feller was furious. In the pack, Dan Harper was looking good in number 998 BMW, the second Rover Racing entry. He was head of Calderelli's Lamborghini and the Ferraris of Nicholas Nielsen and Davide Rigon. Then he attacked Bogoslawski for fourth place and moved ahead. But then he got caught out in traffic and ran wide and lost the place back to Bogoslawski. Bogoslawski in turn would hand the car over for the final two hours of the race to Raffaele Marciello, who was soon on the attack and up to third. He was moving himself up past Luca Stoltz. Two similar Mercedes AMG GT3s going side by side, but the Akodis ASP car now third. Next target, Patrick Niederhauser. The Santa Lock Audi was dispensed with, turning through Le Bose. Through on the inside went the Mercedes, and Marcello's pace was massively impressive. It looked as though there was no stopping him as he picked off place after place, and he was soon on the tail of the race leader and was able to go around the outside and then up the inside to the final corner to put the Mercedes AMG into a lead it was never to lose. Niederhauser moved through also into second place ahead of Nick Yellily, but then on the last pit stop, the Travel 7 Mercedes jumped ahead of the pair of them. Luca Stoltz at the wheel and making it a Mercedes AMG 1 2. To the chequered flag, though, came Raffaele Marciello for the win, a victory to be shared with Timor Bogoslawski and Jules Gounon. One all between Mercedes AMG and BMW. Marcello, Bogoslowski and Gunon taking the win at Paul Ricard ahead of the Almanar. Mercedes AMG of Mauro Engel and Lucas Stoltz and Fabian Schiller with Christopher Mies, Patrick Niederhauser and Simon Gachet coming through in third. But there was delight for Jules Gunon and his co-drivers. Yeah, mega job from the team. I think we all delivered today a really great job, uh, especially the team. The car was amazing. I went for dinner and then uh, Lelo was P5. I come back, he's P1, so I have to rewatch the replay, but I think he did a good job and Timur did a good job in the middle. So I'm just really happy for Mercedes, also 1-2. Uh, I think at the moment our car, we know it's in seven years and it's working really well. So thanks to AMG, thanks to our team for pushing to the limit and uh, to my teammates. The car was really good, uh, of course. Uh, I think I was struggling, I was struggling less uh, with pickup compared to others because then in my second stint I was not quick as the first one. Uh, I mean, I think when you have pickup then you start to slide. But I mean, for sure the car was was mega. I, I was able to recover a lot. We we been quick all the weekend, so yeah, it's nice. The top step of the podium for Raffaele Marcello, Timo Bogoslawski, and Jules Gounon as they celebrated honours in the darkness at Paul Ricard. In the championship, it was Yelily, Eng, Wittmann ahead, Bogoslowski, Gunnar and Marcello positioning themselves as the main opposition. Third, Patrick Niederhauser, Simon Gachet and Christopher Mies. In gold, a second win of the season for Max Hoffer, Maxim Sule and Nicolas Barth. That put them clear of David Schumacher, Mario Sug and Nicholas Bourne in the championship, Charlie Fagg, Sam Dehaan and Dean McDonald, the next chasing trio. Silver honours went the way of Pietro De La Guanti, Alex Arca and Lorenzo Petresi in their Attempto Racing run Audi. Loris Hesemans, Finley Hutchison and Sander Jonga though were ahead in the championship. Petresi, De La Guanti and Arca second ahead of Alexei Nesov, Ezequiel Perez Compaq and Magnus Gustafsson third. In bronze there was a win for Arjun Maini, Hubert Haupt and Sebastian Bode. They were ahead in the championship from Chris Froggatt, Eddie Cheever and Jonathan Quee. And there was also action, of course, in Pro-Am, where recovering after their Monza accident, Alex Fontana, Ivan Giacoma and Nicky Leutweiler mounted the top step of the podium as the category winners. They were ahead by three points from Lance Bergstein, Aaron Walker and Andre Lewandowski. 
within the championship, the Barwell Lamborghini drivers having dropped to third, and the next stop for the championship would be Spa. The CrowdStrike 24 Hours of Spa is the blue ribboned race within Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS Endurance Cup. It's at the Circuit de Spa Francorchamps. It is a storied event with a great history and part of the real appeal of the event is that Wednesday parade when all the cars drive into town and win over new fans, young and old. There's always a great atmosphere. It's always a spectacular race and taking the event to the public is always a big hit with the drivers as well. Uh, it's incredible, there are so many people, I think uh, record-breaking crowds this weekend is expected. It's so cool just to drive a GT3 car into a town, I mean, it's every time a very cool experience. You feel the vibe, you feel how, how excited everyone is for this race. It's once in a year where everyone comes here and um, yeah, it's the best drivers, best teams in the world. I'm so excited, so um, yeah, I can't wait to get going. A huge grid, a huge crowd as well, but the race would start on a wet road and therefore behind the safety car. When the cars were released, the road was drying and it was the Porsche of Mattia Caroli that led away with Alessio Rivera's Ferrari on their tack behind. The Ferrari would move ahead under braking for Lecon and that put the Ferrari into the lead of the race. Further back, Dennis Lind was under attack from Marco Wittmann and Maxi Martin's BMW was also in that battle pack. The BMWs were side by side, but neither of them could find a way past Lind, who was being very defensive and very quick as normal. Three wide in the traffic, up to Lecombe, and it was Martin, the Belgian driver, threw on the inside as the best BMW. Mathieu Drudy's Audi took over the lead as Rivera's Ferrari had a problem and lost time. Janus Vitchio ran second, only to be passed by Calvin van der Linde, and he also copped a penalty for a short refuelling stop. Nicky Team took over from van der Linde and took over the lead as well, diving through at La Source. But then it was the turn of Porsche to make a move. Julian Andlau all over the back of Luca Engschler, and as the Audi ran wide at Bruxelles, Andlauer dived past and took over the race lead. Ricardo Feller, meantime, was busy battling with Neil Verhagen for fourth up at Lecon, and in a really brave move, went around the outside to gain the place. At the six-hour mark, points would be awarded, and for the championship, it was crucial to score well. Charles Wirtz had that in his mind, and he was on the attack to grab the advantage down to Bruxelles and a brave effort around the outside would put the Team WRT entry into the lead and therefore take the points at six hours. But co-driver Dries Van Thor, when he took over number 32, was under immediate attack from Kevin Estra in the number 92 Porsche. And Estra would go by on the exit of La Source. But then there was drama. A full course yellow was called and Neil Verhagen charged into the back of Charles Wirtz. It put both cars out of the race and all but destroyed the WRT entry. It was a big, big hit. The countdown on Wirtz dash, but then all of a sudden as he was slowing for the full course yellow, Verhagen hit him at almost unabated speed. And like a pinball, Wirtz bounced from one side of the racetrack to the other, hitting barriers as he did. But mercifully, no other car collected him. From the outside, suddenly you see Wirtz's car get turned sharp right into the barriers. It bounced across the road. But the best news of all was that nobody was injured. As daylight returned, it was BMW number 98 leading, but was out of sync on the pit stops. Luca Engler was second in Audi number 17, and BMW number 46 of Augusto Farfus in third. There were plenty of battles, though, still to resolve. Calvin van der Linde was on the attack, and he, Luca Engler, and Nicky Tim working well together, moving the car up the order. Nicky Tim was behind the wheel, attacking Dennis Marshall for the lead. The order shuffling every time one of that leading pack made a pit stop. Up towards the line, Audi's side by side, 
And on the outside line up to La Source, it was Nicky Tin who took over the lead of the crowd strike 24 hours of Spa. Then BMW took its turn in the lead when all the pit stops had cycled through. And it looked as though Angela outbraked himself going into La Source. Through on the inside line, but the Rover racing BMW. That said, the Audi wasn't giving up without a fight. Angela going toe to toe with him all the way past the endurance pits. Eventually, it was BMW ahead. The lead traded back and forth. Ricardo Fella moving ahead. Just under braking for the chicane. With less than six hours to go, it was the Audi fight with the Attempto car moving ahead into the lead of the race. Next round of pit stops. Nicky team ahead on the exit of the pit lane of Raffaele Marcello and team with his foot nailed to the boards was determined to stay ahead of the Mercedes but it had too much momentum going up the hill meaning that Marcello would move back into second place overall. Up front it was Philip Eng, Marco Wittmann and Nick Yellily who would come through for the win. It was a second win of the year for Rover Racing, a second Spa 24 hours victory for Rover Racing 2, the first having been for Porsche. But this for BMW and beating WRT was a very sweet result. A delighted team. It's incredible. What an achievement. I mean, for me, it's the first 24 hour win. Um, tried many years, either in Spa or at Nürburgring, and uh, now to call me a 24 hour winner with my teammates Nick and Philip. It's an incredible effort also by the team, by BMW Motorsport. For everyone to pull together and manage to yeah, come out on top like that is just awesome. These two boys really, really deserve it and I'm just eternally grateful for BMW and Rover Racing and of course my teammates for yeah, helping us do it. A win for Philip Eng, Marco Wittmann and Nick Yellily ahead of Raffaele Marcello, Timo Bogoslavski and Jules Gounon with Luca Engschler, Kelvin van der Linde and Nicky Team taking third place overall in a race that had so many possible winners and drama all the way through. As the winners celebrated on the podium, Raffaele Marcello, Jules Gounon and Timo Bogoslavski had scored better at the 6 and 12 hour marks where points were awarded and outscored the race winners. That meant they were just eight points behind in the championship. In gold, it was a win for Charlie Fagg, Dean McDonald, Tom Gamble and Sam Dehaan in the Optimum Motorsport McLaren. The championship, though, was led by Max Hoffer, Maxim Soule and Nicolas Barth. In the Silver Cup, honours went the way of Clement Schmidt, Benjamin Hitez and Glenn Van Berlo, now just six points off the championship lead. In the Bronze Cup, Tim Heinemann, Antares Au, Janis Fitcher and Mattia Cairoli were the victors. But it was the Sky Tempest and McLaren drivers, Chris Froggart, Jonathan Hui and Eddie Cheever, who led the championship. Pro-Am was all about the Sun Energy One racing team. Kenny Harble crashed the car on Thursday. He ended up in hospital. They needed a new car, a replacement driver. But Chaz Mostert, Nick Katzberg, Adam Osika and Martin Conrad took the class win. After Spa, it was back to normal in a sense with a three-hour race at the Nürburgring in Germany. It was a dry circuit in sunny conditions, perhaps not what people expected from a circuit with notoriously fickle weather. Mercedes was looking to score honours on home soil and it was Raffaele Marcello from pole position who powered away, but perhaps inevitably at this circuit some of the story would be decided at the first corner. It's always a pinch point and it proved to be yet again as there was contact in the pack. Some cars went wide, others got turned around and some picked up damage. The Iron Dames Lamborghini was one that came off badly being turned around, others were delayed and the Rover Racing team could count themselves very lucky that despite a big whack, the BMW was still running. It was a huge hit but the car battled on. Others were less fortunate, but eventually the race did start to settle down. In the background, you can see the Iron Dames Lamborghini being turned around and that dropped to the back of the pack. An effort from Marco Wittmann to dive up the inside of Jordan Pepper's Lamborghini. Pepper got sideways, glanced off the BMW and that did a lot of damage to the front of the Iron Lynx entry. Wittmann was delayed and being attacked on either side. Christopher Meat in the blue Santa Lock run Audi eventually powering his way past on the way up towards the chicane. This is what happened. Wittmann going for the inside line. 
Was there contact or did Jordan Pepper just get sideways? Hard to tell from that angle, but that was definite contact as the Lamborghini went into the side of the BMW. Christopher Meese was the opportunist, powering up alongside the BMW as Pepper headed for the pits. Also on a mission was Mattia Drudi. He went past the Rover BMW. That put him up into seventh place. Drudi made the move stick and then started to edge clear of the BMW as Mauro Engel made a move on Fred Vervich, the Mercedes AMG passing the Audi. And right behind the pair of them was David Schumacher. He was on the attack as well in the Gold Cup entry. Vervich, though, with his elbows out, hung onto the place. Chris Frog at Sky Tempesta Racing. McLaren was going well, jumping up the order overall and running second in bronze. He wasn't the only driver on a mission either because a lapped Gerhard Ferraza in the Lamborghini number 58 was also making progress. After the pit stops, Fabian Schiller's Mercedes moved up into second, Schiller having taken over treble seven, the Almanar Racing entry. He moved ahead of the Rutronic Racing Porsche as in bronze there was a change of lead. Joel Sturm jumped ahead of the Haupt Racing Team Mercedes, diving down towards the final corner. For eighth place, there was a big dive being made, and it came from number 32 BMW. Sheldon van der Linde at the wheel of it, trying to find a way past Nick Yellowley, the championship leader. And in this inter-team battle, it was the WRT entry looking to get ahead of Rover. The job done around the outside, a really brave pass by the South African driver. Ricardo Feller was on the attack as well, now on the back of Thomas Priming. The attempto run Audi versus the Rutronic Racing Porsche. To the outside line went to Ricardo Feller, but still he couldn't find a way through. Or could he? The outside line beckoned. Up the kerb went Feller, but he had the momentum coming out of the corner. Elbows out to move through and put himself up into third place. But then back under braking came the Porsche through on the inside line. And as they made the climb up the hill, Ricardo Feller once again had to take to the curbs, but he stood his ground. He had the inside line for the Schumacher S's and finally, finally, finally took third place. Less fortunate though was Valentino Rossi because his number 46 BMW would retire. Damage after it got into the back of the Audi meant that Rossi, Maxime Martin and Augusto Farfus would be out of the race. But through all the drama came Jules Gounon, Raffaele Marcello and Timo Bogoslowski to take a second win of the season. And it was a crucial one with just one more round of the championship to go. Delight for Raffaele Marcello and Timo Bogoslowski in the pit lane as Gounon brought the car home. They won by just under two seconds. Raffaele Marcello, Timo Bogoslowski and Jules Gounon ahead of Mauro Engel, Lucas Stoltz and Fabian Schiller with Ricardo Feller's efforts netting third with Mattia Drudi and Dennis Marshall. A second win of the season for the Mercedes AMG. So it was a good race, as I said. To start in front is always helpful here. Then, I mean, the car was really quick, so it was just a matter to, to keep the tires alive and yeah, to keep a good gap. The car was just unbelievable. So I want to thank Akodis, I want to thank my teammate that did a faultless job, and Mercedes AMG, because today it was an amazing car to drive. With the number 98 BMW not scoring, it meant that the Mercedes AMG drivers took over the championship lead as they celebrated the second win of the season. In gold, it was a win on the road for Nicholas Bourne, Maria Sug and David Schumacher, but Maxim Sule and Nicola Bart were the championship leaders. Silver honours went the way of Clement Schmidt, Benjamin Hitez and Glenn Van Berlo, the championship leaders being Finley Hutchison, Loris Hesemans and Sam de Jonga. And in bronze, there was something to celebrate for Porsche fans, where Tim Heinemann, Ralph Bohn and Robert Renard became the fourth different partnership to take a race win over the course of the season, although it was the Sky Tempesta crew leading the championship thanks to the efforts of Chris Froggart, Jonathan Hui and Eddie Cheever. And the final class for the podium would be Pro-Am, and there was a second win of the season for Barwell Motorsports. Just two drivers sharing the car this time, Rob Collard and Dennis Lynn together 
But already a title won by Alex Fontana, Ivan Jacoma and Nicky Leutweiler. They're scoring enough to give their Pro-Am Championship honours with a race to spare. The Championship showdown would come in the sun as Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS Endurance Cup headed to the Circuit de Catalunya in Barcelona. In the pro category, the overall championship battle would be between the Mercedes AMG of Timor Bogoslavski, Raffaele Marciello and Jules Kuno, the Rover Racing BMW of Philip Eng, Nick Yellily and Marco Villa. 18 points were between them. It was going to be a tough call for the BMW team to win it, but they weren't giving up. Ferrari on pole position, and it was a Ferrari 1-2 on the way down towards the first corner. Alessio Rivera ahead as the pack dived down towards turn one. As far as Marcello was concerned, all he needed to do was to stay ahead of the BMW, and he did so, heading into turn one. But drama would come at turn four, where Mauro Engel made a move on the inside, and there was contact between him and Jordan Pepper. Pepper spun through the gravel and rejoined, but that incident would hang over Engel to the very end. Number 98 BMW, though, was struggling. Eventually, Philip Eng found a way through the order. Nick Yellily looked worried, though, as Eng got into 11th place with a lot of work still to do. And more work was needed after Marcello moved past Dennis Olsen and put himself up into fourth place. The BMW needed to be in the top 10 in class, even to score a point. Charlie Fagg would be out of the Gold Cup battle, though. A puncture and damage for the Optimum Motorsport McLaren. A sad way to end the season. Eng was battling with Simon Gachet and finally wriggled away through into ninth place. But there was still a huge amount more work to do. As he went forward, Alex Malikin was staring at retirement because the man who'd already won the bronze title in the Sprint Cup got roughed up turning through turn 10. It meant that his Porsche had a puncture and that didn't really present itself until he turned into turn 12 and that's when the car swapped sides and around it went, only to be drilled by the boots of VDS Audi. In turn, that brought out a full course yellow and then a safety car period. And when the safety car returned to the pit lane, Dennis Olsen attacked Raffaele Marcello once more. The Porsche would go back ahead but there was no way Marcello was prepared to give up. He wasn't in this race just to bank points. He wanted to make sure that number 88 had the best possible overall finish. They were battling all the way around turn three to turn four, and the fight continued and continued as they ran side by side. It was like a rolling start between the two of them. Marcello on the outside line at three, the outside line for four, but then the road would come back to him as they dropped down the hill. Down towards turn five, Raffaele Marcello had the inside line and eventually he had the place because the next sequence of corners were all left-handers. That put him on the inside line for the kick at turn six and by turn seven, he was back through. It was a great fight between the pair. Less fortunate though, Valentino Rossi. A spin coming out of turn seven, putting him into the gravel, bringing out yet another full course yellow and effectively ending the race for the BMW team. car would be retrieved but it lost a lot of time and the gravel getting into parts of the transmission that it shouldn't ultimately did damage. Disappointment for Augusto Farfus and Maxime Martin as the next round of pit stops came. Treble 7 Mercedes jumped into the lead, Lucas Stoltz at the wheel of the car, but there was this Damocletian investigation to Mauro Engel's activities on the first lap of the race. Then oil went down, courtesy of Audi number 40. It caught out Christopher Hauser who went into the gravel and we'd end up with a rather lengthy full course yellow period whilst almost a third of the circuit was treated for oil. And while that was going on, so treble seven was still being looked at for that incident on lap one. This is how it looked, the contact between Mercedes and Lamborghini, and ultimately treble seven would be given a five second penalty. And it meant that with very little of the race to go, there was very little opportunity of the car building up a gap of five seconds. Therefore, although it led on the road, it looked unlikely to win. 
And so it proved, because it would be a 1-2 on corrected times for AF Corsa and for Ferrari. Nicholas Nielsen, Robert Schwarzman and Alessio Rivera, the race winners. And the champions, Raffaele Marcello, Timo Bogoslavski and Jules Gounon, who will bring the car home. Delight for AF Corsa, Rovera, Schwarzman, Nielsen, the winners, ahead of Antonio Fuoco, Daniel Serra and Davide Rigon, with Thomas Prining, Larin Heinrich and Dennis Olsen taking third, Engel, Stoltz and Schiller dropping to fourth on corrected times ahead of the new champions. But it was a very happy championship winning team. For us it was a good drive, the car was good, Timur did very good in the second seat, Lelo as usual and the team did fantastic. To win two years in a row, the hardest championship in the world, it is simply amazing. Thanks to AMG, to Akodis, to my teammate, and uh, today is a nice Sunday. Honestly, I'm really, really happy. I mean, uh, many thanks to the, my teammates. They give me uh, a lot of experience. They did a lot of job. I mean, uh, yeah, in my scene, I was just needed to be super focused. What I did, I think, was yeah, was good. It's amazing to win endurance again and overall. And I mean, it's uh, it's always an amazing feeling. As you said, the field is is incredible. We did an amazing season. Every endurance race like almost on the podium or win except the Monza in here. So I have to say I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that we show again that we are the best. A race win though for Ferrari and amongst the three drivers Robert Schwarzman was delighted. It was amazing to be honest. Uh, yeah, as I said before, we lost one position in the, in the, in the mid lane. The, to recover it was very hard, but yeah, at the beginning of the race, as we all saw, there was a contact by the other car. So yeah, at the end they got a penalty. We, we just did our job. We were consistent, fast. Uh, all of us didn't do any mistakes, so it was very good. I'm very happy. On the podium, the race winners, Alessio Rivera, Robert Schwarzman and Nicholas Nielsen taking honours in the final Endurance Cup race of the year. But in the championship, Timo Bogoslavski, Jules Gounon and Raffaele Marcello, the winners ahead of Nick Yellowly, Philip Eng and Marco Wittmann, with Mauro Engel coming home third, clear of Fabian Schiller and Luca Stoltz. In gold, there was a race win for Adam Atechi, Alberto Di Folco and Aurelien Panis. The championship going the way, however, of Nicola Barr and Maxim Sule, whilst silver honours would go the way of Clement Schmidt, Benjamin Heites and Glenn Van Berlo. And Glenn and Benji were very happy indeed. Yeah, amazing job by all the team, for my teammates, everything we just needed to finish the race. One, two for the team, so really happy, amazing. All the job we've done finally pays off. Really happy in the end to, to finish one, two for the team. A good amount of points, but we just didn't want to take any risks, so we managed it from the beginning on. Uh, my teammates did an amazing job. I'm really happy that we got the championship today. So big thanks to Grasser, to my teammates and to uh, Lamborghini. The race winners in silver, Sam Neri, Gerhard Tverraza and Fabrizio Crestani. And they were busy celebrating on top of the podium. Ben Van Berlo, Clement Schmidt and Benji Heites, then the winners from Loris Hesemans, Finley Hutchison and Sam de Jonga. As in bronze, honours went the way of Sky Tempesta Racing after a troubled 2022. It was tough, but I was thinking about last year how bad of a season we had and to becoming champions in such a difficult year like this with so many cars in our, and so many good drivers in our category, it's just amazing. It's a dream come true and to do it with them too, it's, it's just I couldn't ask for more. On the podium, the race winners were Henrique Chavez, Louis Pret and Miguel Ramos. They were joined on the podium by Samantha Tan, Lorcan Hannafin and Manu Franca, who were the winning Pro-Am drivers. For the championship, though, Sky Tempesta Racing prevailed. They didn't take a class win, but they did enough to score the championship. Eddie Cheever, Chris Froggart and Jonathan Hui defeating Arjun Miney, Hubert Haupt and Sebastian Bode for the title. And the overall champions, Raffaele Marcello, Jules Gounon and Timor Bogoslavski. They had had much to celebrate over the course of the season. And they stood on the podium, flanked by Team Bosch, and Policon, to the applause of everybody. A great season of racing in the Endurance Cup and there will be more of the same in 2024. Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS Endurance Cup.